Hi guys, I'm Neil. I'm going to um, show you around your new motorhome, which I believe you're collecting on Saturday. Um, we'll, we'll start on the outside. We'll just show you the keys first. So we've got this, this is your main, obviously, ignition key. Everything on the motorhome is central locking, apart from the gas and the toilet. So to lock all the doors, we've got the top button with the Fiat. To open all the doors, we've got the bottom one. Ignore the, the middle one for a moment. So if we press the bottom one, that's now unlocked all the, 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 the doors on the motorhome. The middle one, what you'll do, you'll press that, you'll hear it click in the relays, but it won't actually do anything. So all you're doing is top to lock and bottom to open everything. Okay? So we'll start under the bonnet, which is a bit tricky to get to anything. But the bonnet catch just lives just around the corner here. Just there, look, if you can see that on the on the camera. So we just pull that forward. And then we come to the bonnet. There's a bit of a knack for doing it. There's a secondary catch just in here, look, with a red lever on. And if anyone can see it. So just pull that to the left. And then lift the bonnet. And as we can see, there's not a lot of room. But from your point of view, all you really need to be in here is just the windscreen washer bottle here, so that'll need topping up periodically. In here, which is tricky, I'll be honest, is the header tank. Should never need doing, but your header tank's there, and there's the blue cap on the top. If you need to top that up, you'll be using a hose pipe, but I don't think you will. Okay, next thing is the fuel filler. Fuel filler is self-explanatory. We've got the ignition key. So Dan's been and put some fuel in for you, so, okay, you can see what we're doing there. That's self-explanatory. But we've got Add Blue. You're probably familiar with Add Blue. We've filled it up, so you should be okay for, for quite a while. It will tell you the Add Blue level on the instrument cluster, so please keep an eye on that. Don't let it run out or it will create problems. Okay, so all we do is fill it up in there when, as and when. Okay, next thing, we'll go through the lockers. This is just underfloor storage, basically. Um, we'll, we'll see we'll see the same from the other side but from your point of view the only thing really in here we've got a light switch there's a light switch both sides okay for the underfloor so that's bringing it on there now we have had questions where customers have rung up saying they can't turn the underfloor light off it's because one of the switches has both been left on so you need both switches off for your light to go off water pumps in there there's nothing really for you guys to have to to worry about okay next thing is the gas locker so for now i've put a bottle on i need to show you everything working okay so there's obviously scope in there for two two bigger bottles if you need to we've got the regulator and the automatic change overhead at the minute because we've got one bottle on this bottle on press the button and we've got gas you can see the green band in there okay what would happen when you've got two bottles on you're using the, this bottle, this will run out, that in there will go to red, as long as the other bottle's turned on as well, that will go to red and it will automatically revert to the other bottle, okay? So if you come in here and you see one of, that, that's a red band in there, you know one of your bottles is empty, okay? This thing here is a crash sensor, so with this system, you're allowed, you can travel if you wish with, with the gas turned on, okay? If there's a problem, a pipe rupture or anything what had happened that would shoot out and stop any gas escaping further than, further than the bottle okay to put to reset that all you do i think it says on there look if you just push the button in and hold it for 10 seconds that will then reset the gas that'll probably never happen so from your point of view valve on button on and then you've got your indicator there so we know we're using this bottle okay and that, that's pretty much it in there Okay, next thing is the water, the water system. You've got quite a massive tank on there. You've probably got 220, 240 litre tank in there. There's some drain valves inside, which we'll look at when we get round to the other side. So as long as the drain valve's closed, it's basically a hose pipe in there and just fill it up. It'll start overflowing. Depending on the speed of the hose pipe, you'll get some coming out here, but it'll also un overflow underneath. Okay, with the fuel for the cap, let's just twist it on. Turn the key, and when it spins like that, you know it's locked. Okay, so if we move around to this, you can see a massive garage. 
We'll ignore the box for now. We'll talk about the box later. There's a few bits and bobs in there. But the interesting bit, or the electric part of it, is all in the other side of the garage. So. So in here, we've got all the electrics, or the main part of the electrics in the motorhome. All nice and compact. The beauty of it is you're not looking around everywhere for various things. So the top part is the charger. So when you've got the mains plugged in, just on the outside here, this will charge the batteries. It'll charge the leisure batteries, which are in there, and it will also charge your engine battery as well. The sec nothing, there is a switch on there leave it on you guys don't ever need to worry about that you just leave it on and it'll do what it what it needs to do the second thing down is the mains trips so if you overloaded it with a it's usually a hair dryer or something like that what will happen that will just drop you just need to just come and reset it okay and the final thing if i can get the cover off this is these are all your fuses for your 12 volt electric so these are for the light circuits the television the radio water pump various things okay there are little symbols on the side of them so it'll give you an idea of what they do but some of them the beauty of some of them is if there's a blown fuse can you see the red i don't know if i can see it on the camera there's a red led there so if you see a red light in this area you know that, that fuse is blown okay there are some spares in the in the book pack as well which I'll show you in a few minutes okay so your main habitation fuses are in there there are also two or three five six actually so there are some more in there but it does tell you in the handbook what they all do if you if you're struggling to find them but I'll, I'll show you that when we get in there okay the final thing in here we've got the red key now depending on what you guys are doing when you store it up if you store it or you park it up and you're on hook up forget that ignore that that'll be that'll be absolutely fine but if you're parking it up you're not on hook up you, what they say you should do is just take the red key out that will protect the batteries it'll stop anything flattening your batteries okay but if you're storing it on hook up just leave that on okay obviously with that out nothing inside is going to work so when you're using it that needs to be in that position okay next thing is the toilet so obviously i'll show you how it's how we use it when we get inside the difference with the Katago toilet and the others is you've got a sog pipe so what the sog does every time you open the valve the, the flap for the toilet an extractor fan will set off and any any odors in this tank will disappear through the roof so once it's full there'll be an indicator to let you know inside and to empty it all you guys do is make sure the flaps fully closed on the on, inside then we lift the orange lever up and we have to take the pipe off and you've got the bung on there so the bung will go into the cassette and you can lift it out this is a man job by the way so <laughs> never know a woman do this yet <laughs> so you wheel it across to the disposal site take the cap off okay and then on there you've got a bleed valve so you point it away from you as far as you can tip it up and but keep that pressed at the same time and it'll empty the toilet properly without it splashing all over okay you can if you wanted clean it out which people do it's a good idea really just keep it as clean as you can undo it as a have hose pipe in there and just swill it out again okay the reverse procedure is obviously cassette in to a good distance where you can get the pipe back on okay put the handle in first with that that'll push back in and that just lives in there and just give it a little tug right finally on the outside or the final locker um we've got the other side for the under stuff uh under under floor storage and we've got your barbecue point so basically you've got a barbecue point and i'll make sure there's a little nozzle in there which you just need to connect to your gas hose that will then push into there once it's in you can turn the yellow valve and you can have your barbecue outside it's up to you leave the door open or if you just push it ajar the pipe will, will come out come out um at the side of the door okay right guys we'll look at the awning now i'll not be able to wind it out fully because of where i parked it but 
we'll show you, we'll get it out fair way. So with the awning, the important thing is to make sure the, the pole's in the, in the hole properly. So we push it as far as we get, the can, twist it and pull it down. And then it's locked in, it can't come out and dump the motor home. And basically what we do, we wind it out a fair way. Just be very careful if you're winding these out of obviously the wind, it's common sense, but we do have a lot of them where the wind's got hold of them and it does, it does knacker them up. So if you wind it out to a reasonable distance, we need to put the legs down. And to get the legs down, we just push, there's two of them obviously, so we push against the spring in there, look, and that will then come down. To there. So then if you hold the outer part and lift up, just push the plastic lever. It's quite tight and you think it'll break, but it, it, it won't do. Same with the front one. Push to the front. Okay, and then get it to a decent height. Then we can wind it as far as we want. It'll go quite a bit more. You can see on here we've got all this travel so the arms they don't quite go straight but you're not far off what you can do when it's fully out that part there will be here somewhere so once it's past there you'll wind the awning out and the canvas will drop so you know it's fully out if you come to this then put that down and then wind it back in it will lock against there and it'll tighten your canvas up really tight so you, you've locked it in place basically, but you can only do that when it's fully out. Okay, reverse procedure is obviously, you will need to support it. You can see how far I've gone with that. I wouldn't advise you to go much further without putting the legs down. It would cope, but it's not good practice really. You, you don't want to put a great deal of strain on it. So again, when you come down, just hold, hold the outer part, leave it down. And then carefully, without hitting anybody, they just sit in there. Doesn't really matter, they'll go either way, but I always put them so the, the foot on the bottom is level with the case in here. And then, just wind it back in. until it stops basically that's it that's that's it when you obviously up against the casing you know you're fully home so then we push twist and pull out okay right guys now we're inside the motorhome um there's quite a lot and I'll, I'll cover the things which you guys need to know a lot of the stuff you'll discover as you as you as you use it okay but i'll go through the the, the main the main parts for you and we'll show you everything working so we'll start with the control panel. At the minute everything's turned off, but you can see the symbol on there is just telling you that you've got mains electric plugged in. Okay, to turn anything on is the bottom left hand switch button, which is which is green at the minute. I'll explain, that can change colour to red, but I'll explain that in a minute. Okay, so we just press once and just wait for a few seconds. It'll make a few noises and, and do various things. And then we'll come up with that page there. So that's your home page. So there's a lot of information on there. We can look at it in more detail in, in a second or two. So at the minute we've got the time, two different temperatures outside, inside. Okay, the left hand one lets you know how much water we've got in. So I've put three, there's three quarters of a tank there or thereabouts of water. And the other side is your battery, your leisure batteries, which you can see are, are, are full, full of, to capacity. Okay, so the switch is on the top, or the button's on the top, I'll just turn them all off. The top left will bring the lights into play. And then, I'll not go through all the lights, but the, the light switch is all over the place for you guys to, to play with and see what they all do. And as you can see, as I'm pressing various switches, lights are coming on. Okay, the general rule on the Katago is, if the lights, if the switches are spring-loaded, the lights are dimmable. 
So if we just put the camera on the lights under the bed, I don't know if you can see that on the on the video, but I'm holding the switch and the lights are dimming. Okay, so that's for you guys to play with and get the lights wherever you want to, however bright you want them. And there are lots of switches all over the place, so you'll you'll discover them as, as part of the fun as when you when you when you're living in it when you're trying it all out. Okay, the next one, the tap symbol. Is obviously the water pump so you the toilet to flush all the taps to work we need the water pump on the next one ignore unless you're going to have butane gas bottles it, that's, it's irrelevant it doesn't really matter the final one on the top is the media switch so that will be for the televisions um the radio not used to be the radio but not on this system you've got a different system so that will power the the televisions which i'll show you shortly okay on the bottom the main one we spoke about program there's various stuff in there you can do if you but you guys will really only ever be in there to change the time when we change the clocks whenever that'll be so if you press and hold the program you've got this page here so if you want to change the clock look you've got an up and down arrow on the water tank is up okay so we go to the clock you want to change the clock when the time comes Set it to the little icon next to it, press program, and then you can go up or down as you wish. Okay, so I'll exit that. You can have a play in it if you want to, you'll do no harm if you'll have a look what it all does, but I don't think you'll, you'll be in there a great deal. The next one is the water level, so we can see in a little bit more detail how much water. So the left hand side is fresh water. And the right hand side is waste, so anything that goes down the sinks will go into the big waste tank. So you can see what we've got in there. That'll obviously, one will drop and the other will, will go up. The final button on here is the battery voltages. Left hand side is the engine battery, and the right hand are the leisure batteries. And you can see that's pretty much as good as you'll get. 14.2 is top draw. You won't, you won't get, a, might go to 14.4, but okay. And at the minute, we've got 10.8 amps going into the batteries. So this is your ammeter, that'll fluctuate. If we turn, if I took the electric out, because it's obviously charging through the mains, if I took the mains out, that will go to minus. So plus is what's going into the batteries, minus is what's going out. So if you're a wild camp and you've got all your lights on, you're gonna have quite a big drain on there, a big minus. So just be aware of what you're using and just keep your eye on there. Okay. Just final thing on here, I said about the main 12 volt switch being green. Green is basically good. If you saw that red, what you'd also have on here would be an icon at the bottom bottom line here, underneath where they are, flashing. And it would either be a gas bottle, a battery, or a water tank. And what that means is it's not a fault, it just means that one of them three, so you, one of your gas bottles has run out. You know we said about the red bands in there. You go to that and it'll be red that switch will also be red and you'll have a little gas bottles flashing on there same with the water if the water was low you'd have the, the water symbol there one of your battery voltage is low you'd have either that mode that little symbol there or that one there flashing on there so it just means that whatever it is is low all right guys next thing is your heating so this controls the heating so the left hand button will turn it on We'll just wait again a few seconds it'll come to there so that's telling us now we've got hook up in and it's 24 and a half degrees which is pretty much the same as there so they're quite compatible to change anything get some heating going or some hot water we we'll press menu and then we've got the four lines on here okay the top line is your temperature so you want some heating on at night or certainly in the winter if you just i'll turn it right up for now and i'll just show you how it how the panel works all the way up to 30 okay so i've set the heating up to 30. if we do that we go back to the home page you've got that little symbol appear there so if you see that symbol you will hear it Ellen and i can hear the pump going now if you see that symbol there you know your central heating's working so what would happen, we get, would pretty quickly get to 30 degrees in there, that would disappear, the heating would stop and same as at home, your heating would cut in and out 
as you as, as you've set it to okay the next one is your hot water the shower sign is your hot water so the triangle in the middle needs to be half shaded that's just heating your water normally if you've had a shower and you've run out because you've got limited hot water if you've had a shower or you've washed up or whatever you need some more hot water quickly if you plus that till it's fully shaded that will give you hot water as quick as possible you, you again you won't be able to hear it but i've done that and it stopped the heating working so it'll temporarily do that give all its energy to heating the water once it's got up to 50 degrees or 55 degrees there or thereabouts it'll automatically go back to the middle okay so you, you'll only put that on when you need it boosting basically it is a, it is boost that's what it says in the handbook it's boost okay the third line is if you're on hookup you've got three settings on mains electric so you can either have one kilowatt two kilowatts or three kilowatts if you're on a site with good power have it on three it'll just do it quicker it'll do exactly the same on one or two but it'll obviously take a lot longer okay if you're not on hookup you're on gas so the gas symbol you can see i've changed it from blue to green so now the heating will start working on on your gas um just be aware if because it's such a good big system if you've got it on gas and your heating's on it will use your gas quite quickly so if you can always use electric okay the final thing on the on the older panel it says acc and what that does you can you've got the aircon which i'll talk about a little bit better in a minute but if you wanted you can power your aircon through the aldi aldi panel so we just make sure make sure that's on green and then just set the temperature on as you did with the heating whether you'll use it that way or not i'm, I'm not sure probably not okay and the final bit which i'll not go into detail you can you'll have to sit and read the book there's a lot of stuff in here there's various settings but i'll just confuse the issue if, if you want if you want to have a look if read the book if not give give me a ring give me a ring and i'll i'll explain it a little bit better but i don't think people in general go in them settings it's all come factory set okay the final thing on the heating in here is your header tank so that's like an expansion bottle same as on the engine which we looked at which you can't see and i don't know if you can see it on the camera but you've got a little sight glass there and at the minute the coolant's halfway halfway between it is it'll raise slightly when you've got the heating on obviously the heat will expand the water it'll raise slightly maybe to somewhere near the top um but just check that periodically if it disappears from sight there's there's a there could be a problem there could be a leak or an airlock i'd be surprised because we don't have problems with them normally okay and that's just to say just keep your eye on where that level is somewhere in that that little area there okay so we spoke a little bit about the aircon but we'll talk probably this is how you're going to use it pretty much all the time with the handset so what we do believe it or not to turn it on is press the blue button so we need to be pointing at the magic eye somewhere there you could probably see the red light flashing and then we've got mode button so we've got four different modes we can see on we can use on the handset auto which you can set it to down to 16 which is obviously aircon you can set it all the way up to 29 i think 30 which is heat so this not there's not only aircon it's a heater as well okay so auto will just do whatever you've set the temperature to the bottom one is recirculation so that's that's neither going to give you hot or cold it's just going to bring some air from outside and, and so recirculate it throughout the van sorry wrong one the snowflake is your aircon so that's the one you're going to be using if you look up here you can see the blue light has appeared now so blue is cold so the aircon will start working now chill it down really nicely in the van for you okay and the one with the three lines on there that's heat so again you just set the temperature to wherever you want to on there but we'll talk it's an aircon unit so we'll talk about the aircon a bit better so we know snowflake 
16 degrees, that's as cold as you can get it, which which is fine, it'll get nice, it'll get lovely in here. What you can do at the minute, we've got it on maximum. We've got the fan symbol there. You can change the fan speed. You can see um, we've got three different settings on there. It takes a while to change from one to the other, but you wouldn't if you had it on at night, you wouldn't have it that loud because it, it would there you go. It's just gone down to to the slowest setting. Okay. So again, there's a lot on there. There's light switch you can turn. No, there isn't. Ignore that. There's not a light on this model. But you can set the timer and various things if you want to on there. The final thing on the aircon, we've got the, the setting on there. So in the middle, it's going to distribute the air equally front and back. If you push it to the back, it works the opposite way around. It's all going to come out the front. Push it to the back. It's all going to come out there. Right guys, next thing is the fridge. It's an automatic fridge, but I'll, I'll show you the, the settings. So we just press and hold the button and you get the icons appear. And again we press it, we've got three different lines, three different settings if you like. So we press it and then we're on a scroll system. You can see it moving between the three, three rows. So the top one with the snowflake sign is the temperature. So we want to change the temperature in the motorhome. We'll press it, okay, and you can see the bars appearing or disappearing as I move it round. So you guys will have it somewhere, I'll leave it on the middle for when you pick it up. If you have it fully cold, it'll get too cold in the fridge and it'll start freezing your food. So we'll have it in the middle and then we just press it. The next line, press it and then scroll down, is let, lets you choose how you're going to be using the fridge always leave it on auto it'll do it for you when you're on hookup it'll chill it down off the mains if you're not on hookup you've got the gas so it'll work off the gas bottle as soon as the engine's running it will work off your engine okay so if we change it I'll just change it to gas for now so you can see again I'm scrolling round so we're on the gas symbol you must press it and then go to the back arrow and you can see it's changed from auto so this is now chilling off gas okay but as I say, I'll make sure auto arrow and you can see it's changed from gas to electric which is where you want to be. Okay the third row there's not a deal you don't really need to alter anything on here so again we press it scroll down to the bottom then you can change the light the beeper it'll beep at you if you want it to the fan is redundant that's if you've got a fan on the back of the fridge this one hasn't that one there believe it or not in the fridge there's a heating element in the freezer door just inside here so if the freezer door was frozen up for any reason you'd not quite shut it and it had frozen up if you put it to that position there that would then set the the heated seal up to be able to get in the fridge but again you won't have a problem with that so I'll, I'll turn that one off Oops, lost it now. That's it, let's turn that off. Okay, and that's it with the controls. The doors, as you can see, a great idea. They'll open both ways. So it's quite a, quite a nifty bit of kit, and as you can see, a massive fridge. The only thing to be aware of, and we have had problems with these, um, which have pretty much always turned out not to be a problem it's because customers are not shutting them properly so they'll get in the habit of just shutting it I mean that's shut now but always please this is important as well please check whenever you shut it it is fully fully closed if not we've had times where it's not shut properly then they've gone to open it this side and the door's fallen off so as long just get in the habit of just pushing it you'll never have a problem Right guys, now we'll have a quick look in the kitchen and you probably know how to do this but I, I need to show you it working. Okay, so the gas hobs, what we do, press and turn. Hopefully you can see them all burning merrily on the, on the video. Okay, that's the, that's the gas hobs. Don't ignore them, they're the pan sizes. We've had people where they've put too big a pans on and it's melted the seals in here and various things. So that's there for a reason okay the oven and grill 
some of the principles so we press turn to the right is for the grill igniter move the grill pan before I set fire to the book press and hold a few seconds and you can see grills working merrily the oven to the left anywhere really it doesn't really matter where you go a few seconds away you go now what you'll find with this I've when I've PDI'd it I've left it running for quite a while I've burnt it, it will smell for a bit I've burnt as much as it off, off as I can so don't worry about it it's not a problem but they do tend to smell when they like anything new I suppose really okay while we're in here under here look we've got the gas taps so if you thought there was a problem with the, the in this order they, that is for the um, oven that is the hobs the fridge and the heater if you've got a problem with the oven you can smell gas or whatever if you turn that through 90 degrees it will isolate the oven but you can still use everything else okay, a couple more things in the kitchen this button here is for the central locking on your kitchen drawers okay so for any of the drawers to open the red light needs to be on there when you set off it's good habit to just obviously make sure two things really make sure that's turned on so the doors are all locked and then what I tend to do is just come and give them a shake make sure they are fully closed because we have had issues again where they fly open but they've not been shut properly in the first place okay so it's always worth it just for a few seconds just give them all a, a bit of a pull if you forget which people do I would probably you'd set off forgot to shut the drawers it will automatically lock when your engines running anyway so you should in theory never have a problem but same with the fridge doors always make sure that they are they are properly closed okay the final thing in here is your extractor fan so we just wind the lens up first and then if I can do it with my big fingers the middle button will set the fan going and the left one will alter the speed you can see more lights appearing as I'm pressing so this is extracting so if you've got your sausages on fire you need this on quick to get rid of the, the fumes to slow it down just go there and then just wait for it to stop and if you wanted you could bring some air the other way but because you've got the air con you'll, you'll probably never do it that way okay then importantly always remember to close the close the lens people forget that because they can't particularly see it right guys we'll, we'll show you how to drop the bed there's a few things on here it's quite easy really but there's a couple of things you need to be aware of so first thing we have to drop the seats or move the seats forward and to do that just hold the seat at the top just twist that and then they'll if you don't hold it they'll just shoot forward so as long as you've got hold of them properly that will be okay and I'll just lock the doors with me so, okay then we come to drop in the bed so what we do is just pull the lever and that will drop the bed down as you can see massive area up there okay and we've got the light switch just under the cupboard there that's after what I said earlier that one's not dimmable it's harder on or off but you've got the light switches on there okay putting the bed back up you're obviously limited you can have your duvet you'll store it on there if you get too much stuff on there you won't be able to push the bed up properly but it's suck it and say you you'll know how much is too much okay so to push the bed back up all we do is make sure the curtains are tucked in and then the very important in here we've got weights you must always make sure they they fold in as you raise the bed this one's a bit awkward okay but that drops in if you don't do that you can see what will happen that bit could snag in there and put a hole in the curtain and as you can see now look I'm hardly putting any pressure on till we get to there and it's just and then always give it a good shake around and make sure it's okay right guys I'll probably get wet here but I'll, I'll need to show you the shower working we've, we've got a fabulous shower with two ways of using it just a normal conventional shower or the overhead shower to work it obviously we've got the tap on here I can't remember where I've set it so I'll just yeah there we go so when the lever here that's how you adjust from the top or the the normal one 
So with the lever pointing to the right, we're going to be using this shower because it's all fully sealed. So you'll, as long as the doors are closed, you're okay. You'll not have a water leak anywhere. Okay, so that's the handheld shower or the, the conventional one. The overhead shower, I'll show you without getting water everywhere. The doors, I've just got the little catches on there. So it's very important that when you're traveling, they locked away properly. Don't let them doors slide around because they do they will break pretty pretty easily. So for now, I'm trying to do it without me and Ellen getting <laughs> wet. I've put the lever to the left and then I've got the overhead shower. Okay, it's self-explanatory really, but and then when the doors are close together. Okay. So with the vanity sink again, it's straightforward. Okay, there is that so. Okay, again, we've got various light switches. They're either on or off, they're not the dimmable ones. Main socket, storage, and you've got lots of drawer space as well. Okay, while we're on, we'll have a look in this side and we've got the, the toilet. So if I, I can kneel down. So the toilet flushing, we spoke earlier, we need the water pump turned on on the panel. And then you come to flush it, we've just got the blue button on here. Okay, you can see the you see you've got a good good flow of water there. Okay, down here we've got the lever. So I suppose really when you're using the toilet, open the lever first, do your business, once you've finished flush away. Okay, you won't hear it, you will when you come to pick the motor in up, you'll hear it. I've opened that flap there and that's what set your extractor fan off. So any odours instead of coming out here will disappear through the roof. In theory, depends how bad the odours are of course. <laughs> okay, on here, where the green light is, that's because the tank's empty, there's little or nothing in the tank apart from what I've just flushed. You'll have three lights, when it comes to red, you know that's when the time time to empty. Don't ignore that or you will be, you'll be in a bit bother. Okay, while we're in the toilet area, we've obviously got the, the towel rail on here. Get ridiculously warm in here. So you've just got a therm they put a thermostat on there if you wanted to turn it off or down. Okay, when the heating's on. So I'll, I'll leave it on and then you guys can set it to wherever you want to. In here as well, your wardrobe, you've got two little valves down there. Everything's on at the minute, so as it is now, all the motor home will get nice and warm. If you wanted to turn the heating off in the bedroom area at night, say, if you turn both them valves through 90 degrees, that would get the motor home from this point forward would have been lovely and warm, but it would just stop the heating working at the back. But again, whether you change it or not is up to you, but that's what they that's what they do. Right guys, we'll just go quickly back to the shower. This is the duct board which lives in the shower if you, when, you, when you're not using it. It's a bit tricky to get in, I'll not put it back in properly because we let the water in, the water needs to dry out. But basically we undo the doors, pull them forward and that will just drop in there. Okay, so if you're not using it, please leave that in there and just protect the surface of the, of the uh, shower. Okay, in the bedroom area, not a lot really I'm going to show you, I'm not going to bore you with all this, but you've just got cupboard space basically. Okay, on both sides, as you can see quite a big area. You've also got the, the bed pull out, so to get the bed to pull out, I'll just move that. Just push the lever down and that will then pull towards us. That lifts up and that drops in to make this a slightly bigger area for you guys if that's how you're going to do it. Okay, so just lift her out, put the wood back on there, push the button and slide it back. Okay, the other stuff's cupboards, light, more light switches, but you'll see, um, you'll see what's what as you as you mess around with it. Right guys, next we'll talk about the televisions. We've got two tellies, the main one in the in the dinette area. Just one second. Sorry, people there, so we'll, we'll start again. The main telly in here and the one in the back, which I'll show you in a minute when we've we've set the, 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 the satellite up. So to get the front telly up, we've got the lever under here, it's on the electric, electric bracket. OK, 
Okay, if we get to this height and stop automatically, so that's all we need to do with that. So we've set the telly up and then we'll set the satellite up and all you do, but I've, I've set it up and tuned it in, so all you guys need to do when you're in the UK is press sat and it will go to number seven, Astra two. Okay, and it'll search for a few minutes, depending on where you are. Um, it'll, it could take a while. Only thing with a satellite, obviously make sure there's no buildings or trees in the way where it needs to be. But it'll search it automatically and then it, it sat okay, because I've just set it up, it's locked straight on. So we know now we're on Astra two. And we we'll come to the telly, and we have to point the remote down in this area. I'm wait a few seconds. There we go. With one profit passed along, so you can see a great picture on on the uh, on the screen. The source button, we've got two different systems on this front telly. If you're in an area surrounded by trees and your satellite can't get a signal, you've got antenna. So antenna is a built-in free view area which is above the cab which you can't see. So that will give you some television if there's something in the way of your satellite. Okay, so at the minute we're on, on antenna. Um, and if you press EPG on the handset, this will tell you all your channels. So you can see it's picked up all your free view, free view on there. Okay. If you want us to watch the satellite, we change source, and believe it or not, we go down to satellite and then press enter. Okay, and then you've got, this is now your satellite. You won't get Sky, you won't get the Sky, they'll be on there, but without a decoder, you, they're gonna be scrambled. So you've just got free, you've got free sat on there basically, but hundreds of channels, okay? And they start, whereas on your antenna, the, the channels are in some semblance of order, BBC One, Two, ITV, blah, blah, blah. These are all over the place. So you guys can scroll through it, you can see I've picked one out, number 206 is BBC One. So all your English television channels are in that area. Okay? So that's where that's where we need to be. Two, whatever I said. 206. Okay? And the same on the back. If we just go to the back. So the rear telly, there's no antenna on the rear, on the rear telly, so it's just satellite. So again, we turn it on. You can obviously watch two different channels if you if you wanted to. Tastes meaty. Tastes like a proper gravy. Yes, that one's quite you. Okay, Very you can see where we see where we are on that. Okay. So yeah, the tellies are a good system. Obviously, with the satellite, again, just be slightly wary of the wind if it's really windy. You don't want the dish blowing down, which which has happened, but other than that, you're you're okay. Okay, up in this top cupboard again. There's not nothing really for you guys. This is the satellite control box, but you 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 guys just control it from from the um, the, the panel there. You, you can do it on there if you wanted. And this is your television control, if you like. That's just a monitor. So this is the the main part of your television. On here, if in the future you had Wi-Fi and you you've got a Fire Stick or anything, your HDMI port is just on the side of here. So it's all in there if, if you go down that route in future. Right guys, to send the satellite down, all we do is, there's two things you can do. Press park and you can see it retracting, coming down. Again, if you forgot, as soon as you start the engine, it'll automatically retract. But again, it's good practice. Just get out and make sure it has come down. Because again, it, it has been known where they've not and it's it's caused a bit of a problem. Guys, we're in the cab now, so there's quite a bit in the cab, and I'll, I'll run through the basics again with you on here. We'll do the Katago side first. First of all, we've got a light switch, which is the lights under the bed. Okay, so we've got three-way switching on the lights for under the bed. One switch, two switch, 
and the one near the door which again you'll you'll find out what they all do if you come to the one they the switches there need to be turned on though so if they're turned off that switch or that one isn't going to work so they need to be on and then you can control them switches as, as you wish okay then ignore that one for just a second the third one the one nearest the, the front is um turns a pump on basically so what that does if you've got the aldi heating on in winter this is more for winter really you've got the heating on you can turn that pump on and it will preheat your engine coolant so you're not you've got a head start in the morning basically okay down here we've got two charges so there that's the usb port there that's an old style 12 volt socket which you're pulling never use and under here is for a fan so there's a fan under the passenger seat this area apparently is not is a cold area on a motorhome so you turn the fan on there when the heating is on it'll give you more heat in this area okay right guys so the up and down button which we missed out earlier is for the electric blinds so to get the blind down just press the down button okay you get it to a certain level. it's up to you how you do it if you want it to stop just press the up button and it will automatically stop so we'll keep it all the way down or we'll send it all the way down for now okay so we're all the way down in the morning just press the up button and it'll automatically go all the way to the top so while we're waiting for that the side blinds straightforward they just pull out and magnetize onto there the cab one the cab door one is a bit tricky to do so there's a knack to doing this this is a bit of a way of doing this so if you twist towards the screen and then that comes again magnetizes onto there if you just try and pull it forward you'll struggle to do it so just twist and there's one on the driver's side is a bit more fiddly because it's one long piece but it's the same principle just pull it out and it magnetizes all the way across okay with the blinds there's three ways you can do it so we've got the switch there we've got a switch down under there just above where the speaker is the chrome switch does the same that's up and down and there's another one above the hab door next to the heating panel that will do the front blind as well so you've got three ways of of, of doing it okay right guys we're nearly done um we'll just show you the the camera and there's a couple of audible warnings which i'll, I'll tell you what they do so with the ignition on we've got an audible warning. i don't know if you can hear it but you certainly will if you when you come to use the motorhome there are two audible warnings one is that the steps out so the step retraction button is near the hub door but there's also one here just next to the um reversing camera screen okay but the other one is it's the quieter one of the two it's the mains you've got the mains hook up left in so if you hear the that's the quieter one you know that your electrics in you'll see it in the mirror anyway um the step out one is ridiculously loud so you just need to come here and retract the step okay the camera so there's two ways again you can use the camera we'll just start it up for now that's your audible warning for your step so it's a lot louder so i've just retracted the step so now we've only got the electric plugged in so the reverse camera obviously as soon as you go into reverse the camera will come on with the grid so that's pointing down okay if you want to see what's going off when you're traveling the left hand button on here will turn the camera on you've got a dual camera so at the minute that's pointing straight back at our building if you want to have a look down what's again behind you you've got the right hand button there so that's the difference straight back and looking down that's your bumper there where the red line is and then you can alter various things in it's still in i'll make sure it's in english when it's been done the lads have not changed that okay so that's that's what we do with a reverse camera right guys the media unit or the radio i'll briefly show you this you, you'll have to sit and play with this and just work out what it does so to turn it on you see we press the button okay that's your volume on there as well okay um home page 
sorry, get my words out, sat nav. So we've got the nav on here. Okay, that's telling us where we are. Search. Just go into search and put you wherever you want to go in it, and it'll obviously bring it up there. You probably, I'm sure you're familiar with sat navs on on various vehicles anyway. Okay. Lots of stuff on here. You can mess around, pair your phone to it if you Bluetooth, various things. Media. Okay, radio, FM, DAB. Okay, and just search for your different channels. We've got, got some Planet Rock on, which two Ellen's discussed. Okay, so there's tons on there, guys. It's all press and play, basically. You never mess around with that. On here, same with the heating. We've got the hot and cold temperatures, different positions, air con, recirculation off, fan up and down, hazard warning lights. That will lock the doors when you're traveling. Traction control will stop the wheels spinning if you're in snow or in mud, probably mud more to the point. That is your hill assist, um, so you're up and down steep hills, that's your button there which will, will give you some help in, in negotiating them. Hand controls on the steering wheel again, press and play. Headlights on here, okay windscreen washers wipers this side, horn, okay. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it on there. I can go into detail, but you just play with it and see what you do. Right, guys, finally, we'll just show you quickly the book pack. Dan will maybe show you this in more detail on when you pick it up. So we've got the spare keys. There's no, there's no locking or unlocking on this one. It's just starting the vehicle. If you've only got the spare keys, you will have to physically lock all the locks with, with the habitation key. Okay, but in here, we've got tons of reading okay this because you've not had a face-to-face -face handover I think I've covered pretty much everything but if there's something I've missed or you're not sure of everything in the motor room is in here and it's all all quite clear really so if you need to don't struggle often the case of just looking in here and it'll it'll give you the answer electrical system as we said Fuse, tell you about the fuses if we can get to that page there you go that tells you which fuse does does what circuit so that'll be a big help you probably never ever blown fuse but if you if you know where they are that's what you need to do okay so that's your bit you will look at i'm sure from various times this lot is to do with all the appliances in the motor and you'll never look through there okay but it, again it's all it's all in there if you need to but that one yeah you, you may do you may well do in there and it's the English version as well. Fear book as well. You, you can. It's all in there for you if you if you need to look in there. Hopefully you'll not need to. But there we go. So I think, guys, that's pretty much it. I think we've covered not everything, but the basics. You'll get the motor home and just explore what it what it all does, and I'm sure you'll love it. Okay. Cheers.